What's going on, everybody? I uh, ran out of time yesterday in Grand Island, Nebraska, and stopped at Bosselman's. And uh, went inside and got a hamburger. That hamburger was thirteen dollars and forty cents. And I was like, awkward. And now, mind you, the that, the waitresses have nothing to do with that. And so, it wasn't cool for me not to pay the waitress. That's how they make money, which isn't right. So, but anyway, so the 1340, 141540 is what I paid for a hamburger. And uh, so I get out to the truck and uh, start munching on the hamburger. Cooked that thing, put it on the grill, and forgot about it. I guess because that thing was overcooked. It was uh, 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 the edge of the burger, the beef had the dark color, a good eighth of an inch into the beef. Uh, it was crunchy. It was well overcooked. So, uh, so anyway, I left the house in a hurry, didn't get any groceries, and that's what happens when I don't get groceries, is that I end up doing that, I end up paying a gazillion dollars for because I guess people think truck drivers are made of money. So I went to Walmart spent uh, $97 on groceries just now and uh, had supplies. That should last me should last me about 24 hours. <laughs> Anyway, that'll last me a few days. And uh, I, I tried to get up. I know I should have been running last night. I had my alarm clock set for um, one that's wet. I had my alarm clock set for 11 o'clock. Because that's when I could roll. But if any of y'all know me, oh, that one's got mold on it right there. That blackberry. Let me get it out of there so it doesn't spread on the other ones. Don't, don't it? Any more of those blackberries? Okay. Anybody like getting blackberries with mold on them? Me neither. So, anyway, my alarm clock went off at 11, but I, I, I had laid there. And I couldn't get any sleep, man, in the darn truck stop. Some guy pulled up next to me, blah, with his motor running, blah, and I kept telling myself, oh, that don't bother me. That don't bother me. I kept laying there going, ah, oh, that don't bother me. 11 o'clock comes around, alarm clock goes off. I'm, the guy finally turns off his motor. I finally just start nodding off. I was like, oh well. Uh, give me about an hour. So I sat up for an hour, woke up when the alarm clock went off, and uh, I still have spaghetti from the house. I forgot about that. And uh, I went through that for a few times. I finally just said to heck with it. I know I got plenty of time to deliver this load. I think I got 
Go about 500 miles or something like that. Not a lot. So, so I went ahead and slept in until 5 o'clock. Guess what I'm having tonight? Uh, New York strip steak and New York strip steak tomorrow too. <laughs> yep, I gotta eat right, man. Uh, you know, I just gotta, I gotta eat right. I gotta keep myself in shape. I got that kidney disease. And uh, if I don't eat right, uh, it shows. And what I mean by that, does it show on my belly? Well, of course it shows on my belly. Uh, I'm not so, I mean, it, it uh, I don't feel right. My kidneys don't clean right. I ain't going to feel right. So, so i got to eat right. Darn, it didn't want to close. Let's try this again. I hate it. Sometimes I'll be driving down the road, my refrigerator pop up and all the groceries come laying on the floor. Some things, sometimes stuff will pop out. You have, one time I had chili peppers. The, the, the bottle, like this right here, the jar, it came out and it busted. <sighs> so, the, in my Peter belt, I had made a little uh, lock on there. Uh, Before COVID ever came, I always want to make sure I keep my hands clean and you go into a grocery store and touch everything. Because next thing you know, we'll be touching your face. That's how you get sick. So, keep them dudes clean. All right, I need water. We got water. Let's put this away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get out of here. So we are in Sydney, Nebraska. You want to see? Sydney, Nebraska at Walmart. And uh, so I got to I gotta get out of here. My 30-minute break is it. I got um, seven hours left on the driving clock. Let's get out of here. So anyway, so yeah, I went ahead and slept in until five o'clock, but I, uh, so I figure I'll have, should knock out a minimum of 500 miles. That's a minimum. That'll leave me about 200 miles to drive tomorrow. But uh, not just a minimum, I should be way better than that, you know. So, so we got her beat. I need to start looking for a load, though, for uh, for Friday. You know. Lick my fingers, put it in my hair. <laughs> anyway. That's too funny. Do you see that guy? He licked his fingers and slicked back his hair. <laughs> anyway. 
So yeah, that's what's going on with me. I'm in Sydney. Um, 539 miles to my All over there, that, under that golf sign it says. Um, 239 miles to my delivery. Had to stop and get some groceries, especially after that little ordeal yesterday. Uh, buying a $13.40 hamburger, <laughs> which was crazy. And, uh, two. So, that does, these groceries should hold us off for a day or two. I hope so. I got a couple of steaks and then we'll make some salads. Uh, they have a steak and salad tonight. Get pulled over, make steak and salad. Tomorrow I should be able to have a steak and salad. That'd be good. I think a steak and salad for an old truck driver like me should be all right. What do y'all think? Oh, uh, this load right here, I need to uh, call DuPont and let them know. Uh, some of you have uh, remembered that, uh, I don't know, some of you may have remember that uh, uh, there at DuPont they got a new system over there where you don't have to put eight foot tarps on anymore and you can just put on a smoke tarp but they want you to put <coughs> three straps per bundle so that's like 18 total straps and they don't require a strap across the back but I noticed the last time <coughs> I ran out to uh, uh, Montana up there that time that went in the snow uh, anyway, uh, that back bundle was trying to slide back. We got a gap about yay big between the back bundle and <clears throat> the bundle ahead of it. So that just proves that it does move. And the thing is, is with the styrofoam, you know, it's you can't really tighten it up or you'll crush it. So you can only just like snug it up. And, uh, You know, and then when you get to driving in compacts, those straps are starting to, you know, uh, get a little looser. And then uh, you need to pull over and snuggle back up. But anyway, regardless, uh, that back stack had moved about that far back. And so I put a, a strap around the back. Now, most places where you get styrofoam, insulation like that they require you to put either an X on the back or at least one strap on the back and uh, to keep it that last stack from sliding out and uh, so when I saw that it was actually moved back that's the second time that it did it I went ahead and put a uh, I put a strap and tied it around both ends uh, or just looped it around the strap in the front and hooked it to the uh, trailer so it wouldn't pull on any straps, but it would keep it up high uh, where I looped it around and then took it around the back straps and did the same thing, did a loop around this at the back, keeping the strap up high or it just fall. And then uh, <clears throat> went around to the other side, did the same thing, and then hooked it to the, uh, the trailer and tightened it up and got it nice and snug and then snugged all the ones back. All the all the regular ones, I snuck them all up. So it's not going to go any. It's not going to move anymore. Uh, it'll be good from here on out. Uh, but my point is, for bringing that up, I got to remind myself uh, 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 the next time I get a load with Newcomb to let them, them know that these loads are moving on that back bundle. So uh, don't be so inclined to let drivers run out of there. They're going a long way without that back strap. They will move on you. So uh, I just need to do a heads up on that because you know, I mean a lot of drivers they won't get out and check it. They man, the reason why they they do that is because drivers they'll they'll, they'll drop the stuff on the highway. You need to have that back strap on there. So I need to give myself a reminder to let Dupont know that that back uh, bundle does move because this is a fairly new procedure with them and so uh, I'm going to let them know heads up that back bundle moves <laughs> so anyway uh, ladies and gentlemen um, thanks for watching Big Belly Rebuilds 
uh, I don't know if I have any uh, stories for you today. I mean, I got a bundle. None of them's coming to my mind right now. And uh, Ruthie B says she loves my stories, and I'm a great storyteller. But uh, I've already used up 15 minutes of y'all's day, and uh, I'm ahead through. Uh, so I'm out of here. Uh, we're up. Uh, Nebraska about to come into Wyoming and uh, that's basically what it looks like right there and let's uh, see we got that mile marker there on that sign it says 55 so we got 55 miles left in this state and we'll be in Wyoming I'm gonna stop up in Laramie Wyoming and top up my fuel tank right now I'm full tanks are full I'm not full tanks are full <laughs> give a shout out to my wife Ruth to me she works really hard on the videos she loves your guys's comments and she she loves your thumbs up it helps us grow and uh, if you'll give a comment uh, almost guaranteed that she will uh, make a uh, uh, she'll reply back to you she loves the comments so uh, we appreciate you God bless have a wonderful day and